Hello everybody, welcome to the fourth game from Error BB Division 1, Match Day 5. We've got Eliod with his Wood Elves and Jedi Bear with his Chorfs. Uh, really or really nice chorf team well it's not actually really nice he's got he's got two rookies and he's only got one claw uh, and a tackle bull but versus wood elves it's pretty nice right he's got a pretty nice team versus wood versus elves um, and he's got a really nice ball carrier so it's a pretty good team versus elves not that good versus the bash teams of the division that's the problem his, pro his problem is going to be coming up against like you know the orcs and the nurgle with four strength four and tons of guard he's gonna have problems but against the uh, elves of the division this is a obviously every every chorf team is pretty scary versus elves and uh Eliod has got two nice war dancers both with tackle strip sidestep one's got mighty blow one's got dauntless so two great dancers there and uh, he's got this movement nine one turner, not not a natty, but it's what sprint sure feet. Is that sure feet? Yep, sprint sure feet. Movement nine. Sidestep, pretty amazing. Only eleven players though, so you know all of Elliot's games are pretty uh, pretty dodgy. They're they're all pretty dodgy. He's only ever got eleven players. He's never really had a bench for a long time. So. Uh, all of his all of his matches are a bit brittle. I don't like leaving this bull out here. I'd definitely like to have pulled the bull back. I just don't know why he's staying there. He's not really doing anything. You either pull him back to here to strengthen with this to screen, or you uh, pull him a long way back to put him near the ball. Uh, as it is, look at this gaping hole. <laughs> and uh, yeah, this thing. See, if this bull was here, this just doesn't happen, right? So, yep, that was that was the mistake Jedi Bear made on turn one instantly. Uh, is it a mistake? I mean, I'd call it a mistake because while this may not be, you know, the best course of action for Eliod, it gives him a good chance, doesn't it? Like it gives him a chance to to make something happen, and I'd rather my opponent didn't have the chance to do this. Whether it works or, or is the best play or not, I'd just rather like play it safe and him not be able to uh, cut my team in half. <laughs> so yeah. Yeah, this ball just had to do that. Especially if you're going to take the score, right? I guess he thought it was a 2D. Was it, it was a 1D. Maybe he thought it was a 2D. But even if you think it's a 2D, right? If you're not going to re-roll it, it's a 1 in 36. If it's a 1 in 6 or a 1 in 36, you put the guy in the right square first. And my initial reaction was that square where would have been pretty good, wouldn't it? Now, he's in a bit of a pickle because uh, he's got no sure hands at all. Um, Elliot. Oh, Jedi Bear is the one with the, uh, with the inducements here. 100 TV down. That's a bribe. Oh, God. Oh god. But it does the pass! It does the catch! <laughs> and now we realise why he's got the ball on the sideline there. Fantastic. <laughs> it's actually pretty great. At least it means he doesn't get stripped or anything, does it? That works out amazingly well. <laughs> That actually works out amazingly well. Probably the only way the ball doesn't doesn't get lost this turn uh, at all. So there you go. Glorious. It means he probably loses 2-1, but hey. But I don't think he's going to be able to stall here. Maybe, maybe he can run back and cage in the centre next turn. Like, if Elliot doesn't stop him, he can run back and cage in the middle next turn. Well, it's kind of around the tree, though, isn't it? Maybe not. Reroll. Really wanted to uh, get that dealt with, I guess. Yeah, this is the play, right? To punch there, blitz there, and run up here to stop him getting back into this cage. You don't want him to be able to. Uh, 
Make a safe cage. You want him to go in and beat him 2 1. It's nice, this isn't it? That's, there's a screen there. And I don't think he should have done this. I think he should have been like one back or something. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, he's tagging. Okay, that's pretty good. Alright, Elliot, the scumbag. That's pretty good. Um, but I would have maybe just had him like here or he here or here. So that they're all they're all screening with each other and stuff. I guess well there's him. So maybe there. Maybe there. And then everything would be screening with each other. I hate not fishing for the power first. I think you have to just fish for the power. Like you don't want to just rely on the dodge, right? Like blitz him. Two dice, you might roll the power, right? You've got to take the 30% chance to just get the get the initial power. He's not gonna sidestep anywhere worse for you. So just just blitz him. Fish for the pal, if you don't get it, dodge. Really hated uh, not doing that, but there you go. So two rerolls to one, no damage for Elliot. So we can Daka, double Daka, 2-1 win, book it. I realize that may not sound too exciting if you're not a fan of the Daka, but I love the Daka. We've got the offset tree man here, so he's definitely going to dacker. That's Elliot's trademark. Trademark for the Wood Elf dacker. It's pretty good as well. Really good, actually, having the tree there. You know, like, oh, how do I break through near the sideline? We'll have a fucking strength six guy that they can't fucking move at all on the sideline. It's pretty good, isn't it? Not so good against Claw. But... Um... You know, like, he may just get taken out here, but versus everybody else, it's just amazing having the tree there. It's so good. We had other people, like, start with a, a big guy back here and stuff, like, you know, especially if it's a rat ogre. Um, but having having the big guy here, when it's essentially unkillable like a tree man, is pretty good. And even, even uh, with Claw, right, if they commit to hitting it, that can uh, open up things the other way, so... The speed of woodies. I do love a good Daka. Will he go for the passes as well? That's the question. Yes, hand it off back to him. Yes. Yes, Elliot. Let's see some good SPP farming. It's so good. It's so much fun as well. That's the best part. It's so much fun just just passing between your own guys as the as your opponent desperately tries to play Blood Bowl. <laughs> Brilliant. Very heavy in the center, giving in the sideline. Interesting. We're putting the hobble a bit over. Nope. We're totally symmetrical. But it's interesting, isn't it? Because with the tree, it makes you asymmetrical instantly. They know which side they should be covering more. <laughs> so he's got the stand firm there to help out. Oh, tree's rooted. Well done, tree. We can still do something. No pass this turn, sad. I don't really like passing against Chorfs, to be honest, because, like, you know, you need the rerolls for the Dodgers. With having so much tackle. I mean, 
this is uh okay yeah he probably needed that with only two tackle zones the break tackle in was uh was looking pretty tasty wasn't it i guess he hasn't got tackle but yet the carry hasn't got block so oh, this one's got tackle so yeah that, that wouldn't have been terrible would it uh, a four plus in and then maybe a scatter in the crowd five plus in is a lot worse so like Elliot had to make that last move for sure Problem with putting these two guys in here is, like having two here is way better, right? Having two here is way better than having one here and one here because now, like, he's you know behind the ball. It's amazing how bad being behind the ball is. <laughs> oh shit! He goes for it anyway. But this is a one D, isn't it? Oh my god! He gets the pow. That's outrageous. I mean, don't follow. That's outrageous. I mean, Elio did the right thing. He, st <laughs> he should have stopped him trying. <laughs> oh my god, he caught it! <laughs> that should have been enough to stop him trying, right? Because without that guy, it's a 4 plus in for a 2 dice. And with him, it's a 5 plus for a 1 dice. But he went for it anyway. Flip me. Flip me. Not what I would have done. Who can say if it's good or bad? Oh, the two play skulls! Oh my god. So now do you just hand it off to somebody? And like try and cage them? Or do you have to go for this dodge away still? Whoa. He rolls a one! Oh my god! Oh my god, he <laughs> He's being cast. <laughs> Flip me, the ball's not in a tackle zone! Oh my god. That is unbelievable. That is actually unbelievable. Ball carry is just about too far away. You've got to hit this guy and see if he pans. Just got him. I'm not sure about this. I think I'm going to 3D him if I'm going to hit him, right? Get this guy up and 3D him if you're going to hit him. Or you could hit the uh, dancer afterwards. I would definitely move him. I guess you can. No, he's he large four. You could just dodge there, right? You've got to. You've got to pick up with the it's strength four. You just have to. I hate not picking up with the strength four. I absolutely hate that. So there's 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 the option of you don't have to blitz. You don't have to block this guy, right? Because if you block that guy and he sidesteps to there, he blocks your path completely. I guess he's got no rerolls left. Okay, yeah, so okay. So having the no reroll if he's got if you've got one reroll, I think you know, you either fish for the pow and you two plus all the way through and pick it up. But without the reroll he's just not doing anything here though, is he? That's the problem. Like double GFI at the end to there maybe or do do something. This is uh Hmm. It really sucks on not having a reroll. Like, obviously, you really want to play it safe then. Could foul this guy. Stop him maybe getting away next turn, because, like. You know, Wood Elves. Wood Elves are very similar to Skaven, aren't they? In that it's just too easy for them to do anything. Oh my god, unless they roll a one. A double one? Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Instantly power the dancer. Oh, I bet Jeddy Bear wished he had another reroll right now. But, uh. You know, it could still be... Oh, my God. He just GFI'd. Oh. I think you have to do things like, you know, hitting this guy and, you know, moving around. So he needed more safe moves that turn. He needed more safe turn, more safe moves. And, uh... Yep. Yep. That is a bit sad to roll a 1 in 36 yourself after getting such a golden opportunity. Now oh, the edge 5 just gets it fucks off. 
Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god, disgusting. Absolute disgust. One, two, three, four. GFI, GFI. So he's got a chance. Did he double GFI? I guess he should have GFI'd again if he didn't, right? To just stop this chance completely. Yep, don't leave the ball on the floor versus elves. Or rats. You just can't, because this will happen. Like, it's too e The odds are too e too good for them. Even without rerolls versus a bunch of tackle, the odds are just too good. You have to shore things up with your safe moves that t that previous turn. I understand putting off, you know, the, the 2 plus pickup. Okay, does it with him? Fair enough. Yeah, that's better, isn't it? That's definitely better to do with the ball. I didn't realise he was more, more skilled. Right oh, he's moved for 6 as well. Here we go, big foul. He's still got the bribe. Huge foul on the dancer. Well, not huge, but big enough. <laughs> not Diced. Gets a power though. Really nice. Nothing. You do nothing. Well, at least Elliot isn't scoring, so you know he comes out the half one nil ahead. That's pretty good. A defensive stop there due to <laughs> due to two snakes, <laughs> and still nearly nearly conceded, <laughs> but still counts. So, you know, like two snakes isn't out of the ordinary, right? Like one in thirty six is is you know it starts to get quite likely when you when you start doing them multiple times. Uh, so like it's not unusual to roll two snakes in a half for owls at all but um well he was going for the quick score P did he know he's not he's got that I thought he was going for a quick score there cause he had the tr but he's got the tree out of there. like the way I saw this, this these three on the LOS and I thought he was going to try and punch it down the side but it wasn't it was just because he's down players it's just protecting against the blitz, and his his intent was always to dacker. Just with a spread LOS, he wants as little in contact as possible, doesn't he? So he was going to blitz and move back, but instead, he's in a bit of a pickle again. Tree roots again, <laughs> instantly. I wonder where the tree was going to move. I wasn't too bothered about the tree there. I think I'd have left it there for this turn. Wow. Not sure about everybody going behind the ball. I guess you can't reach, you can't reach. Oh my god, he leaps in. He leaps in for the surf. Whoa. An imperfect defence there. Oh, he gets away with it! He gets away with it! <laughs> so yeah, obviously the stand firm should have been stood there, not this guy. <laughs> and he puts in the reroll. Gets the surf. So that's great, isn't it, getting the free... Getting the free surf there. I mean, he had to roll some dice for it. Two, three, two. All without dodge, but... Uh, flip me. I, I couldn't have this guy ahead of these, like, on on purpose. Just just would freak me out. <laughs> yeah, wonderful start to the drive for It is great when you get to surf people as elves, isn't it? Cheeky leap surf. Very nice thing to be able to do. But the problem is they haven't re-rolled, isn't it? Not having dodge. Not having dodge. Wow. Him having so much tackle makes things tricky. I feel like this guy would have been better there. You know, keep tackling the dancer. I think you've got to keep tackling the dancers here. Shouldn't have said that because I have yet to play a Jedi Bear. <laughs> but I think I think this foul isn't great. I guess with a with a bribe you still do it right. Without a bribe, you don't do that foul. With a with a bribe, you do. I guess is the rules. It's the 
boats. Makes the tree makes the tree relevant. Glorious. This is certainly, you know, good players exposed value. Really. This is the problem with having eleven men, he's he's pretty much always gonna be having to expose good players. Yeah, does the handoff here is nice. Gets on the best player for the job. And exposes a line. Man, the tree's just so good, isn't it? Even rooted, it's just so good. I might have, uh... Ooh, he's not blitzing this guy, what? Oh, he's going for another break tackle dodge. Well, this is, again, this is much better, right? This is, this is like the first half. The 4 plus for 2D. Uh, which is what it should have been the first half. Like, you know, it's when he should have gone for it the first half. I think 4 pluses for 2Ds, very good. I think the 5 plus for a 1D was not good, but I think this is completely fine. The problem is getting surfed. If you, uh... <laughs> the problem is getting surfed afterwards, isn't it? But he, uh, he stops that by attempting to dodge again and failing. <laughs> uh, can, he, can he surf the ball? Can he surf the ball here? Put this guy in. And then blitz him. And then push the ball back. No, you can't, can you? If you had, like, frenzy, you could fill in that square and that square blitz him so that he's in there and then block him again with that guy and then chain out the ball that would be amazing wouldn't it chaining out the ball flip me but he would have needed a, a frenzy to have done it get that dancer up that's pretty pretty good isn't it Tricky. I mean, these these break tackle balls. Very easy for them to get in and do things. I guess no, oh, you can't even reach, can you? Just gotta. I guess I'll run him a bit higher. What I don't like about Jetty Bear's play is he hasn't, you know, utilised the strength four of the horns that much. Um, He's been putting in a system blitzing with it, with anybody, whereas you know if you can get that, it's much better, isn't it? Yeah, obviously he sidesteps there. Oh, he's gone for the blitz with him. I don't like this. I'd have much rather gone for the three plus dodge blitz because this guy's just going to get surfed now. Oh, I guess he gets to foul afterwards. Yeah, if so, if he if he fouled him afterwards, it's still super easy to surf him though. But yeah, I guess fouling the fouling the dancer afterwards uh, would have protected against the surf. But unfortunately, <laughs> that is now. I mean, don't say it's over. But. That guy is off the field, and everybody on the pitch is behind the ball. <laughs> and it's screened by a tree man. So, that turn has pretty much cost Jenny Bear the game, hasn't it? Well, not the game, the drive. Cost him the, cost him the win. Well, maybe not even the win, right? If, uh, if Elliot scores early, he might still get the win. But um, it cost him the drive, for sure, that, that turn is... Not good. Now, how is it good? How do you make it good is the question. It's not easy, is it? It's, it's really not easy against this team. But that... Being able to go past this tree is just disgusting. It really is disgusting that you can't... 
you can't put players in these squares and you can't try and hold the sideline really at all you've got to hold it past the tree or behind the tree but you know he got into that horrible situation where he wasn't able to hold it in front of it or behind it he might be able to hit the ball again eh <laughs> double dodge I mean he could go for the double dodge hit the ball he doesn't he goes for the 3d 3d and base the ball or at least get near it doesn't need to base it does he like these GFIs can fail that's the problem like a lot of people GFI till they pop sure feet but the sure feet itself can fail as well can it so Blitz with a dancer and run back, or we'll block with him. Stand firm. He pushed him away. Oh my god. So if he, if he could have pushed him away, then... Oh, he still goes for the dodge. If you could have pushed him away, then I think if, you, if you're going to dodge with a dancer, then isn't it better to dodge and hit the ball? I guess he could have powered and then just stood there. Yeah, okay. Okay. If you power this guy, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Hmm. He could go for the double dodge to hit the ball. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, his whole team has just been left in the dust, hasn't it? That's the problem. Was that turn eleven or whatever? Just, uh, just left him too far, too far up the field, too far in well your half. And down his strength four, edge four as well. Nice foul here though. Dirty player. It's the removal. And just scores. Yeah. So, if Jetty Bear gets his ball carrier back, he's got a chance. If not, Elliot's got a chance. Dancer stays out. Carrier stays out. So. This is very dodgy for Jetty Bear now. Very dodgy. Because Elliot's only got two turns to score. But Jetty Bear with three turns has to feel like he has to try, right? He has to try to score. But trying to score versus Elves, you know, quickly leaves yourself open and stuff. And he hasn't got his ball carrier. And while the ball carrier isn't that good, obviously it being an uphill or a 1D, is a lot better than it being a 2D or a 1D, so... What's this? 1, 2... 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6... And you can blitz the dancers, that's actually pretty great, isn't it? 1, 2, 3... Oh my god, fuck off game. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6... You could even double GFI, right? Ah, he's only got one reroll. One, two, three, four, five, six. Do you double GFI there to try and get into the into a big cage? Or do you just go kind of central, get as much back as possible? Don't even try and hit the I guess this this bull could have hit the dancer. If you hit the dancer you do it with a bull. So you've got like less of a commitment. And you've got more players to protect the ball. You have to protect the ball. It's more important I think to to not lose, and it is to try to win. Kills him. <laughs> that could have been the dancer just quietly. Apple works. Look at Dog Elliot. Oh, I don't like this running forward. He's doing a bit of a PC, isn't he? He's doing a bit of a PC.
No, not freeing him up. I mean, he really doesn't assist for that as well, but still. This is very over committee. Does he know L's Agility 4 is the, is the kind of move this is? Yeah, this was not good. Not good at all from Dreddy Bear. And uh, Elliot can roll some 2 pluses. Oh, fails the 3. Fails the 3. Rolls all the two. I mean, this is a good. This is a good turn of dice rolling from Elliot. You know, don't get me wrong. This is a good turn of dice rolling. What he also could have done, he could have blocked with a tree to get on these two responsive players, and this guy could have come around the side as well, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. GFI, GFI. I quite like that. And then you've got the because uh, it's quite hard. The, the, there's a lot of dice rolls for the uh, dancer, so I quite like coming around the other way. But obviously, this guy without block and the uh, dance having strip. It's obviously the dancer's a lot more likely to get the ball down, get the ball out. But uh, this worked great having having these players still able to uh, activate afterwards. Like great, great ball scatter direction. And yep, that is sick, isn't it? What a sick turn! What a sick turn from Elliot. But um, it was really, really big mistake from Jetty Bear. The t you know, turn fourteen. His turn fourteen was real bad, real bad to to like leave it that easy for a lot. And it, well, it wasn't that easy, but it kind of is, right? It's a bunch of twos. No, no dodge, but it's a bunch of twos. Like it's not hard. It really isn't hard. Is the is the is the harsh reality of it? Wow, he's managed to get his break tackles in and hit the ball with tackle, and so it's, it's a great recover. And he's caught it, so it's a great recovery from Jetty Bear. But look, even after recovering, half his team can't do anything because he split them so badly. It's like it was a real, real, real big mess of a turn fourteen. Well, Dwyer, interesting you should ask that question. Interesting you should ask that question. I mean, this is still easy for Elliot. Um, it's interesting. So there's a couple of ways to do this, right? There's a couple of ways to do this. You can just 2 plus and hit there and hope for like... You know, obviously, 1, 2, hit him, knock him to there, hope for a favourable bounce. The other way would be to go here, leap. So you're adding a 3 plus. But you've got strips, so you're still probably going to get the ball off him. So he could go there and then 3 plus, and then obviously you get to push him to here, and you get a guaranteed good bounce. Almost guaranteed, unless you, you know, like this goes there. But it's almost guaranteed, like, really good bounce. So it's interesting. Uh, I don't know, obviously, none of us know if it's worth adding that 3 plus leap for the good bounce direction, but um, obviously Elio didn't. He just went for the 2 plus and then rolled double skull, so the leap would have definitely failed. <laughs> but uh, it's interesting, isn't it? And as it happens, he gets a pretty flipping good bounce. Definitely one of the better bounces there. Like, two bounces were horrific, right? And probably three. And there you go. Amazing stuff. Amazing stuff from Dial Spelt Backwards. And, uh... So do I. Here's the thing about good coaches, right? Um, I think they're all off a mark. And I wouldn't like to say, you know, that Elliot, you know, Elliot, Purple Goo, K-Fog, I wouldn't like to say any of them are better than the other one. Even though one might be slightly better, right? And obviously there's loads of metrics you could use, there's loads of data you could use to try and prove anything you want. But I think all of the good, like, well, you know, like, so there's, like, there's basically, there's tiers, isn't there? There's tiers, and depending on how wide your tier is, you can group them together. And I think it's not that wide between 
really good players that I don't want to try and split them. Do you know what I mean? Like, obviously, you could split them into individual tiers, which, like, they do with, like, chess and stuff, right? The individual ratings. They just literally say, this guy's the world number one and stuff. But, like, um... I just feel like, you know, there's so much luck in Blood Bowl. And it's such a fruitless task anyway to, like, try and rank anybody. But it's not worth trying to rank anybody. Like, I don't think... I don't think, like, you know, say Artemis is meaningfully better than Elliot in any way. Or vice versa. So, there you go. Hope that answers your question by not answering it. <laughs> there you go. What was the answer? Would I say I'm better? No. There you go. That's the answer. But nor would I think he's better than me. Right? That's the thing. Even though he might be, or I might be. <laughs> I don't care, because I think it's it's such a small difference that it's not going to... In my opinion, it's small anyway. Other people might think Elliot's way better than me. But in, in my opinion, I don't think it's a, a very big difference. And you know, while I personally may have some biases towards certain people. You know, well, that's what you find, right? You'll find that, like, you know, Blood Bowl 2 coaches are more biased towards Blood Bowl 2 coaches, right? Viewers of Twitch are more biased towards Twitch streamers. Like, you know, I've seen Elliot play a lot more than I've seen, uh, say, Andre play. No, Andre streams, isn't he? Uh, Cyber Knight, right? Cyber Knight doesn't stream. Does he not? I hope he doesn't stream. <laughs> Let's see. Who's good that I know doesn't stream? Oh, God, I don't know. Let's see... You know, Kadenik before he started streaming, right? Like, you know, he, once Kadenik starts streaming, he gets higher rated because people get to see a lot more of his play um, and can confirm that he's good. Whereas somebody who doesn't stream just doesn't have that. You don't have the exposure to. So you'll find that, and you'll find that a lot of the tabletop players will rank tabletop coaches higher because they get to see them winning their tournaments that they care about and they get to play them or you know see them playing well on the top table or whatever so there's a lot of bias for, for everywhere but uh i think for me i wouldn't make, i would make the tiers big enough that some good players i think aren't as good as others but i'd put Elliot and myself in the top bracket <laughs> my personal top bracket i would put myself in the top on a good day. And and that's an interesting thing as well, right? Because I have more bad days, I think, than people who are as good as me, right? Like, I, I tend to play down to my opponent's level a bit more. Streaming particularly. Like, you just end up talking loads and not really paying attention at all. Like, I remember... I remember... Uh, I remember I'll never forget Ducky saying, you know, uh, he lost concentration for a turn. It's like, I never have concentration, right? Like, I do in the playoffs. But, like, when I'm streaming, I don't concentrate on any of my turns, you know, pretty much. So, like, and then you'll see Shawnee stream, and he does concentrate, and it makes his stream a bit rubbish. But at least he's concentrating on what he's doing, right? So the player level is higher, more consistently higher. And consistency is definitely a metric you can use. So, you know, that, that I would say inconsistency goes against me, but a lot of that is due to the streaming. And But even without the streaming, if I see that I'm playing somebody rubbish, I'll, I'll just... You know, because I guess because I'm lazy, I'll, I just won't give it as 110%. Whereas if, if you know, I'm playing Elliot, I'm like, oh, boy, howdy, i got a knuckle down now. So that's, that's one of my, probably my biggest weakness, I would say, would be the inconsistency. So there you go. That's, that's an interesting aside to a really interesting match. <laughs> uh, congratulations to Elliot. Great performance to come back from a lot of bad dice there. And, uh, you know, good performance from Jedi Bear as well. He did defend well in the first half. Uh, of course, helped by the double ones. And in the second half, he just needed to, to, you know, play a bit more safe, really, without, you know, really had to play safe there. Elliot's team, he didn't have a lot of players, but he's still always going to be dangerous. And it was a bunch of two pluses and three pluses to turn him over. And, uh, you know, just if he'd been that more safer, he could have he could have at least secured the draw. So there you go. Thanks for watching, everyone. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. And stay fantastic.